Here we are then, first location. Uh, it's just above Elta Water. It's on the road that goes uh, from Elta Water over to uh, Grasmere. Um, I was going to say there's not many people use it, but there's a car just gone past. But if you look in the uh, background to me, you should see the Langdale Pikes. A uh, bit of snow on top. Uh, there's some beautiful colour. And uh, if you think I'm squinting, it's because the sun's directly in my face. I've moved now to another location, uh, literally 50 metres away from the last. Decided I wanted to get a little bit of height on the shot. Uh, I'm also trying a vertical orientation on the camera now. Um, I think this might work a little bit better uh, than the earlier images, or at least give me something a bit different. You can see um, with the X-T2, it's got quite a nice feature now, where the screen will also tilt when you've got the camera vertically as well as horizontally. It's quite nice. I'm still using the filters on the front of the, uh, the camera, but I'm also trying to get a little bit of this uh, wonderful brown bracken in the foreground. Um, the skies over towards the Langdales are pretty interesting, so I'm just now waiting for rays of sun to start hitting the peaks. So let's give it a go. Hi everyone, I'm back now after the trip to the lakes and I've imported the images into my Lightroom. What I'm going to do now is show you how I process one of the images that I shot on the hillside. So here you can see the image uh, shot with a relatively long lens on the camera and your first thing you'll notice is it's quite overexposed. That's because I was shooting to the right, so I was deliberately overexposing the image in order to try to improve the quality of the shadowy areas. So the first thing I'm going to do is try to correct this a little bit. And I'm going to actually change from the Adobe standard camera calibration to the camera Provia standard. Now, <clears throat> this was shot with the X-T2, so I have some quite useful um, profiles installed that come with the camera. This one's particularly good, even though it's a standard profile. And the next thing I'm going to do is try to reduce some of the exposure a little bit. And at the moment, if you look at my histogram, there is nothing in the blacks area. So let's just try to correct that with the black slider. Okay, it doesn't want to do it uh, go too far. Um, so I'm going to actually see if I can drag over the tone channel a little bit. There we go, on the tone curve. And I'm going to also reduce the exposure a little bit further and up the contrast. Now that's starting to improve the image. I'm just going to push the whites up to get a better balance. And the next thing I'm going to do is try some selective adjustments. So I'm going to try to uh, add some more contrast into this hillside. The sun was out and it was quite a bright day and you can see here the shadow but it's not really showing up very well on the image. So let's make a selection here and now we'll start to try to reduce the exposure slightly. We'll up the contrast and we'll also up the whites and potentially Let's have a look at the highlights now. Just the whites is enough there. And I'm also going to darken the shadows. And now I'll probably add in a little bit of dehaze and a little bit of clarity. And that sort of makes the image look like it's a, a little brighter in those areas. I might even just push up the saturation a little bit and also the temperature. There we go. That now looks like it's getting more of the direct sunlight that was there at the time when I shot the image. Now, the next adjustment I want to make is to the sky region here. Um, that's quite weak at the moment and it was definitely a lot clearer on the day. So let's make a selection here. Now, I'm going over the hill here and here, which I don't really want to do. If I put on the overlay, you can see where the adjustments are overlapping. So I'm going to actually use the brush tool that comes with uh, the later editions of Lightroom, and I'm going to use a raise now to get rid of some of this selection here that I don't want, and also on this hillside here, 
So there we go, that's got rid of those. I can now turn off that mask and I can start to make the adjustment. So we'll reduce the exposure, up the contrast. I'll probably up the whites a little bit. And let's have a look at dehaze and clarity. There we go. And that's balanced out the background with the foreground and also the mid uh, mountains as well. Okay. We can now add a little bit of clarity in overall if we want to. It doesn't really need too much. I may actually reduce some of that contrast and up the exposure just slightly and also add in a little bit of vibrance but we don't need too much at this stage. Now the other thing I might try is just adjusting this colour temperature. There we are. That adds in a little bit more feeling of light into the scene and if I want to I could add in a little bit of an adjustment there with the tone curve. And that's done a fairly good job of a basic adjustment. Okay, I've now got the image open uh, from Lightroom into Photoshop and I'm going to use the Nick Viveza add-in to try to adjust this further. Um, if you've not got Nick Viveza, uh, it is free. You should really go and download it from the Google uh, website. If you Google Nick Collection and you'll find the entire range of Nick tools which are great and free to use. So to use Viveza I just use this selective tool and I click on Viveza and now we see the image opened in the editing uh, area. Um, first thing I want to do is actually look at the contrast adjustment in these areas. So we'll make a selection here. Now I'm placing the image um, with the command key held down on my Mac just to allow me to make a selection. I can then increase the contrast of the selected area and I can also increase the saturation as well and also the warmth. Um, this warmth slider is excellent and it's giving the appearance of more sunlight now on this hillside. Um, I'll now pick the mid distance and again I'll make a selection of the hillside and I will increase the contrast there and I'm also going to increase the structure slightly and also just very slightly the saturation but not much. Now I'm not so sure about the warmth, um, yeah just a little bit of adjustment there on the warmth. Now here we have selection on the sky and this time I'm going to increase the contrast, I'm going to reduce the brightness and I'm also going to use this shadow tool here just to reduce things down a little bit more and maybe we'll place that a little bit differently there we go um, and now on to the mountain side itself again you can see that being selected up the contrast and the shadows we'll use a negative value on the shadows there um, and maybe a little bit of saturation and I'm going to actually reduce the warmth slightly on the distant hillside. Um, that gives it a feeling of depth. Um, the more orange, brighter colours need to be in the foreground down to the more blue colours in the distance. Okay, so let's have a look how this looks in comparison to the starting image we brought in. It's quite good. And that we will take through to completion now. Click OK. And there we have the finished image.